So if you were looking to add a pair of parrots to your, I think one blue and gold macaw parrot family or flock, um, what do you think would you add a pair of hands macaws or a pair of eclectics? What do I Hi, I'm Karen, the author of The Parapless Bond. In this video, uh, we are having Emerald here. Oh, you, you want to do the flip? You want to do the flip? Uh. Um, and the question, of course, was, what would I add? What do I think? A collective or a hands massage? Well, I think Emerald is doing a really good job of showing you how loud she can be. Now, she's not as loud, of course, as a blue and gold. The blue and gold macaw is larger. Emerald, being a mini macaw, uh, just, I think, doesn't have the lung span to make as much noise. Emerald is intelligent and charismatic. She's kind of an amazing bird in a little package. I, I mean, amazing. I suspect that if, um, if I was getting either baby hands macaws or a pair uh, that's an adult but like the pair know each other, I suspect they might not be so loud. I don't know though. Emerald uh, was given to us, she spent some time with us last year and then this year her owners were like, okay, they, you know, they, they because of their personal and health issues, Emerald now, resides here. Emerald is now a permanent member of our flock. Um, and, you know, I think she was, Emerald was having a little bit of a hard time. I think she was a little bored, that kind of thing. Parrots, you know, they get bored easily. And an intelligent parrot like Emerald, oh, I feel like they, they get bored sometimes quickly and easily. You want to do the spin? Spin? Like last time. Spin? No? Okay. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to be forthcoming and tell you that I have never really had an eclectus. But I've looked into them because they are fabulous. They're, I mean, they, God, their colors are stunning, stunning, stunning. There's, you know, there's no other pair of parrots who look like them since the female's red and purple and the male is this wicked, phenomenal, amazing breed. Now, eclectus parrots, I think they're gonna be quieter. I think your noise level is gonna be lower. That might be like a pro, a reason to get an eclectus. However, one reason I don't have an eclectus is um, I've shied away from them. Probably the biggest reason is because of their diet. Eclectus parrots are one of the few species of parrots that really have a specific diet. I mean like really, really. And what I mean by that is Macy, my gray cape here, her diet is actually similar to Adonis there, our African gray. You wanna go there, sweetie? There you go. And their diet is different than Ursula's right there. Ursula's is an Amazon. And Emerald's diet is not the same as a blue and gold macaw's diet because she's smaller and so she only gets a teaspoon of macaw mix, whereas the blue and gold's gonna get more. And every species of macaw really, um, if you really got specific, would have a different amount of fat that they should be getting like from the nuts, that kind of thing. So every species of parrot has a different diet, but the eclectus are even more specialized. My first understanding is that eclectus don't eat pellets. I'm sure there are pellets out there made for eclectus, but it would be something that I would really research. Okay, so Lorenza, the back of my yellow nape and I are quickly interrupting this video because as I was editing, I decided to research some of the eclectus diet. I think that it's really significant and that's why I wanted to research it. I could feel and hear her coming in for landing. Um, so the thing is, when you look online, 
I just threw up in the air. When you look online, a lot of the really big sites that have a lot of, you know, the ones that are going to come up on the first page, the ones that are like either an established blog or an established store, that kind of thing, some of their information is just rewritten by a um, by someone they hire to rewrite information. In other words, I, it's not all the time, it's not any one particular site, but somebody wants to get in on the video. Um, but, no, go flying, sweetie. Uh, but it isn't information that they're sharing based on their experience, based on their real research, based on anything. It is a blog that they have kind of swallowed, chewed, and are regurgitating. Good, bad, right, or wrong. I'm not saying whether that's good or bad. I'm saying that when it comes to the eclectus diet, you really <laughs> need to know the right things because um, basically if you have an eclectus parrot, you should not be feeding pellets. If you do feed pellets, they should not be the vitamin pellets. That's the extra vitamins are going to be hard on the eclectus. Um, and you should not do the colored pellets. The coloring, the food coloring is going to cause them potentially enough difficulty that they'll bite themselves and damage themselves. And um, you should not feed them eggs. You should not feed them anything like chicken, those proteins. And I understand that you also should not feed them rices, pastas. Basically, if you have an eclectus, their diet is going to be heavily fruit and vegetable. And I, and you need to look at that because it might be heavily vegetable and then fruit. That might make a difference. It's real important that they have that roughage. It's real important that they don't have things like the eggs. I understand that if you give your eclectus things like eggs or chicken, um, it's just... It's, I think it can be pretty fatal. So that's why I've always shied away from an eclectus because it's like they just have a super specific diet. Parrots have specific diets, but I feel like there's some leeway. And with eclectuses, it's just super specific. And I think you really have to find the right, um, the right source to really talk to and really research to really make sure that you don't end up slowly but surely or maybe not so slowly um, finding your eclectus having some severe health issues and i would make sure that i'm giving them a pellet that they're really allowed to have the next thing is for example i give some egg protein to um some of my parents that require some protein hi sweetie um like my africans in the cause not this one necessarily or it would be eating bitty little piece for her because she's small. Um, and you can't just research online the proper diet for eclectus because people say all sorts of things. You would have to actually really find an expert. Now, I actually asked my mentor about eclectus diets at one point. I'm going to see. If I have the website he recommended, um, and if I do, I'll put it in the notes below, because eclectus aren't supposed to have those scrambled eggs. And so that's one of like my main things that I give my parrots for breakfast. So you get a little too bad. Yeah. Um, they get beta carotene in the form of either carrots, sweet potato, usually both. Um, and like I said, my parrots that need protein, they get some scrambled eggs or something with a little egg in it for that protein. And um, sometimes people are like, oh, that sounds cannibalistic. It's actually very normal and natural. In nature, if they ran into eggs, they would eat them. But not, I don't, but not eclectus. The other thing that I think you should know about eclectus is a blue and gold macaw is, um, I think they're one of the sweetest, um, I've heard they're clowns, but the sweetest and sort of, um, uh, I mean, there's, like, I think that my harlequin macaw might be more mellow, but like they're mellow, 
They are a great macaw, I think, to have as a pet. And I think that they would be very bonded to you the way like all macaws are bonded to us. Now, an eclectus parrot is an Asiatic parrot. They're from that family of parrots. And they tend to be more independent. So, that might be good, that might be bad, depending on what you're after. Because I think that a parrot that you are having to be with all of the time, it's very hard. You're not going to fulfill those needs. That's, that's hard. And yet, their, um, their flock would be with them all of the time. So that gets a little tricky. And so an eclectus is kind of nice because you don't have to like babysit them all the time. They're not like a, a two-year-old that you have to be with all of the time, like a two-year-old human baby. They're, they're more independent. And if you have two eclectus, which I think you should, I think that's a great way to go, um, they may not bond with you as much or you have to really spend time with them. So I think those are some of the things that would have me determining what I would get. Um, and it, I would have to really sit with it and decide, do I kind of want some noise? Although I suspect that, like I said, a young pair aren't gonna be as noisy. Um, do I want like the independent eclectus? And if I only had a pair of eclectus and um, a blue and gold macaw, no, that wasn't nice. That wasn't nice. No. Then I, um, <laughs> okay, don't you bite me again. Then having a different diet wouldn't be so bad. Like then that wouldn't bother me so much. So she just bit me, like, and she didn't draw blood or anything. She just nipped at me. So I, I grabbed her and I put her down on the ground because parrots don't like that. And that's my communication uh, I, I didn't like that. Don't do it again, because if you do, I'm gonna put you back on the ground, and next time I'll walk away. So that's some training that has no yelling, no negativity, no nothing. It's just a consequence, which is what they would do to each other. You know, there's a behavior, and if she doesn't like the behavior, hopefully she won't keep causing me to behave that way, that kind of thing. All right, I hope that helps, and please let me know whether you get an eclectic or pair of hands for cause, or if you, start to consider something else. But, of course, parrots are phenomenal. They fill your life with colors and sound. So, here's to having a blissful bond with your parrots. Catch you next time.